ventricular septal defect. Please watch the normal circulation, covered in the atrial septal defect video, for better understanding. Ventricular septal defect is a hole or multiple holes, in the interventricular septum. First we will see the classification of VSD. VSD can be classified according to many variables. First we will see about the anatomical classification. To understand it we have to know about the parts of the interventricular septum. Interventricular septum has four parts. Membranous, inlet, outlet, and muscular septum. So the defect occurring in these parts are named accordingly. Paramembranous VSD, inlet VSD, muscular VSD, which can be in the posterior, anterior, midventricular, or the apical part of the muscular septum. And the last is the outlet or doubly committed subarterial VSD. The most common type is paramembranous VSD. The second classification is according to the size of the VSD, by echocardiography. A small VSD is less than 33% of aortic annular size. A moderate sized VSD is 33 to 75% of aortic annular size. And a large VSD is more than 75% of aortic annular size. The third classification is according to the CATH study. A small VSD has a QPQS ratio less than 1.4. A moderate-sized VSD has a QPQS ratio between 1.4 to 2.2. A large VSD has a QPQS ratio more than 2.2. CAF study can also find the VSD resistance index. If the index is more than 20 units per meter square the VSD is called restrictive VSD. Small VSD are usually the restrictive type. If the index is less than 20 units per meter square the VSD is called non-restrictive VSD, these are usually the large VSDs. Let's see the pathophysiology of VSD. In VSD there is left to right shunt across the defect. This is due to the higher left ventricular systolic pressure than the right ventricular systolic pressure. Shunt does not depend on right ventricular compliance, as in atrial septal defect. Due to the shunt there is increased pulmonary blood flow. This increased blood flow in turn reaches the left atrium, and then to the left ventricle. So there is left atrial and left ventricular volume overloaded state. So slowly the left atrium enlarges. And the left ventricular dilatation and hypertrophy occurs. There is no right ventricular volume overload, as the right ventricle also contracts when the left ventricle contracts. Thus right ventricle acts as a conduit for the blood to reach the pulmonary artery. As the right ventricle pumps against increased pulmonary arterial pressure, there is right ventricular hypertrophy as the time progresses. Initially, there is pulmonary arterial hypertension due to increased pulmonary flow. This pulmonary arterial hypertension is reversible. As time progresses there is remodeling of pulmonary vascular bed for increased pulmonary blood flow. This increases the pulmonary vascular resistance. Pulmonary arterial hypertension due to increased PVR is usually irreversible. The pulmonary artery becomes prominent, but not much dilated as in atrial septal defect. Let's see the clinical features of VSD. In small VSD, the children are usually asymptomatic. In moderate to large VSD, the symptoms develop in infancy itself. Babies can develop congestive heart failure symptoms due to left ventricular volume overloaded state, due to the shunt. Congestive heart failure symptoms are fatigue during breastfeeding, sweating of forehead, and failure to thrive. They can also develop recurrent respiratory tract infection, due to increased pulmonary blood flow. In moderate VSD, the symptoms are similar to that of large VSD, but with less severity. On physical examination, small VSD has pansystolic or early systolic murmur, at the lower left sternal border. Second heart sound splits normally, and P2 is normal. There is also systolic thrill at the lower left sternal border. Large VSD, 
has the classical pansystolic murmur at the lower left sternal border. There is also a mid-diastolic murmur at the apical region due to increased flow across mitral valve, thus producing relative mitral stenosis. Second heart sound is narrow split, and P2 is loud. Ejection click may be audible in the upper left sternal border, if pulmonary hypertension is present. There may be a systolic thrill at the lower left sternal border. Moderate VSD has similar auscultatory findings as of large VSD. Let's see the electrocardiogram findings in VSD. In small VSD, the ECG is usually normal. In moderate VSD, there is left ventricular hypertrophy. And there is left ventricular volume overload state, that is Q wave in V4, V5, and V6 leads. Also sometimes there is left atrial enlargement, that is seen as broad, bifid P wave in lead 2, and enlarged terminal negative portion of the P wave, in V1 lead. In large VSD. In addition to the above findings, there is cat's watchel phenomenon. That is tall biphasic RS complexes in the mid-precordial leads V2, V3, or V4, it denotes biventricular hypertrophy. Let's see the chest X-ray in VSD. In small VSD, the chest X-ray is usually normal. In moderate to large VSD, there is cardiomegaly. Left atrium is enlarged. Left ventricle is dilated, and it forms the apex. There is prominent pulmonary artery. With increased pulmonary vascular markings. Echocardiography is the diagnostic procedure of choice. If the VSD is not treated, the pulmonary vascular resistance increases in response to increased pulmonary blood flow. When the pulmonary vascular resistance increases, more than the systemic vascular resistance, there is reversal of VSD shunt. That is it becomes right to left. The patient develops cyanosis, and Eisenmenger complex. The left atrium and left ventricle regresses, as there is no longer volume overload state. There will be only right ventricular hypertrophy. On examination, there will be central cyanosis, the VSD murmur disappears, S2 will be loud, single, and palpable, and there will be silent precordium. In chest X-ray, there will be regression of cardiomegaly. Central pulmonary artery will be prominent, with peripheral pruning. ECG shows right ventricular hypertrophy, with strain pattern, with right axis deviation. So to prevent these complications, VSD must be closed at appropriate time. In of case infants with large VSD, having major symptoms of congestive heart failure, failure to thrive. Surgery is indicated as early as possible. In infants with large VSD with mild symptoms, VSD can be closed by 6 months of age. In case of moderate VSD, elective surgery can be planned by 12 months of age, if there is no evidence for spontaneous closure of VSD by this time. If further delayed, the risk of developing pulmonary arterial hypertension is very high. Young patients with small VSD, are usually kept under observation. Surgery is indicated if they develop complications like, infective endocarditis, or aortic regurgitation. Surgery is contraindicated in patients with Eisenmenger complex. Thanks for watching. Hope it helped.